Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you could be so kind, take a moment out, uh, you know, help out the channel, help the channel grow, uh, click a like, share, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. I'm obviously usually not recording a Thursday video, but uh, I took Tuesday off because we had such a slow day. So I figured I'd kind of share my thoughts today. So hopefully everybody is uh, doing well. So all I heard, all I heard yesterday um, on social media about people who are trading 15 minutes, how it was so obvious that yesterday's 50, uh, 50 basis point cut was going to be sold to the close. So obvious. So I'm assuming it was so obvious to get long on that 400 point reversal to catch the 2% gap up today. Correct? Right? Anyway, let's get back to business. So the market is the market, right? The market's the market. The market is nuts. It's never going to make sense. It's always going to make you uh, feel that you are uh, uncomfortable and not in control and all the good stuff. Uh, again, we are all human beings. That is going to be uh, a standard until our eyes are closed and we're buried in the dirt, right? That's just the reality. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure it out. Just roll with the punches. If you're a long-term investor, buy the companies that you love and just hold them for five, 10 years. That's all you can do, right? That's all you can do uh, as an investor. If you are an active trader, go day by day, day by day, trade by trade. Don't try to analyze. Don't try to overthink. Don't try to rationalize because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can think of. There's nothing that you can possibly imagine that is going to help you from the, 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 the left field curveball in the dirt. It's just kind of the reality. And what we saw this week is just a crazy, crazy week. Uh, first two days, absolutely nothing, literally nothing. Uh, yesterday, a, a complete crap show, as I said. As you can hear, my tone is a lot better today, a lot more uh, happier, a lot more normal, because again, today was a much more normal session compared to uh, the Ringling Brothers crap that we saw yesterday. Um, and honestly, you know, if you woke up today and you had a 2% gap up on the NASDAQ 100 after that massive, massive reversal into the close. Congratulations, you hit the bingo. I didn't, right? I didn't. So when I woke up this morning, um, I usually wake up around six. If I have overnights, so I'll usually wake up uh, around 4.30 or so, you know, somewhere around there. Um, so when I woke up this morning and I saw the NASDAQ uh, futures up 200 points, I just started laughing. You know what I mean? I just started laughing because I, all I said to myself was, well, why couldn't we have got that move yesterday, right? Why couldn't we have got that move yesterday? Like, why couldn't uh, we get that 52-week high of meta yesterday and just ram up the other 10, 12 points? And everything basically that I thought was going to happen yesterday in the afternoon after Powell uh, stopped speaking happened pre-market this morning. So I was like, oh, God, are you kidding me? So you had to laugh, right? You had to laugh. I'm a very positive person. I don't believe on dwelling um, I don't believe on moaning and bitching about things I can't control. I'll always vent, right? I'll always vent. Again, if, if you can't vent to another trader, who the hell are you going to vent to? You believe me, your spouse, your husband, wife, your dog doesn't want to hear about your day. So if I'm not going to vent in, in front of traders, I'm going to vent to. So I'll always vent. That's how I kind of process my my thinking and kind of process uh, my mood. But I'll always the next day, forget about the day, concentrate on the task at hand and have a fresh start. Again, the past is the past. We can't control it and we don't live there anymore. So ironically today, we had to find the value, right? Because everything gapped up massive today. Everything was up four or 5%. No matter what stock you were looking at in technology, it was a four or 5%. And it really does show you no matter how the market closes, the market opens, whatever the case is, uh, in between, the lesson here is, let's review, do not fight the Fed. We saw massive um, money flow today in small cap stocks, in technology names. You saw massive outflows today, banks as well. Uh, you know, banks as well. You have Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, uh, names like this do very, very well. Obviously, um, you know, obviously uh, this kind of environment, although uh, higher, having higher rates, uh, is better long term for them in a weird way, in a very very weird way. Don't at me, okay? Uh, but a short term cutting of rates, obviously more customer activity, right? More loans, more this, more that. 
uh, in the third. So it's very, very, uh, it's a very, very cool scenario. And this is why, again, stocks and life sometimes doesn't make sense. We have big flows into technology, you have big flows uh, into small cap names, you have big flows uh, into banks, and a lot of consumer cyclicals, a lot of real estate, right? A lot of utilities have the outflow. So basically, showed you that risk is on. You had Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin surging. I think it was up. Uh, I think it was up to like sixty three thousand. So you really saw today a, a really big move in speculation uh, money names. And the most important part is like what happens next. The one thing I did know yesterday, as much as I had no idea what was going to happen today, uh, and I really didn't, you know, I couldn't even try to guess. Uh, I did know one thing. Yesterday we did maintain uh, the fifty day moving average on the close, and again that is a bullish thing. So for the investors uh, who got paid off today. On an incredibly, incredibly aggressive day today. Congratulations, right? Absolutely, congratulations. Uh, here are uh, the final tallies. Uh, the NASDAQ opened up 2%, closed up 2.5%, 440 point rise on the NASDAQ. That is silly, right? That is silly. Uh, the Dow is was up 1.2%, uh, and the SP 500, because of the banks and so forth and so on, and a lot of commingling of the NASDAQ names. Uh, we're up about uh, 1.7%, which is absolutely astronomical. Uh, is there a world tomorrow that we get a little bit of profit taking at the open? Absolutely. Listen, when you get a four, you know, two and a half percent move on the NASDAQ composite, of course, why not? You know, you, you're definitely going to have a, an opportunity for some uh, profit taking coming to take place. But I don't believe, I, I, at least I, I say that with tongue in cheek, with, uh, you know, with fingers crossed because everything is happening, uh, anything is possible. But I do not believe we're going to have a scenario that we give everything back. At least I hope not, right? Obviously, I'll always be ready on both sides of the market. But when you look at names that were above the 50-day moving average that we continue to kind of harp on every single day, kind of pretty much on a, on a, uh, on a regular on the videos, the stock that, that did very, very well were above the 50-day moving average. And we'll get to one specifically uh, that is um, was, was rock and rolling today, but more important, has uh, potential for more upside. So if you look at the names that continue to do uh, very, very well, you have Microsoft, right? You guys remember that? Once Microsoft got above the 50-day moving average, again, you can see how big the move is. Uh, you had Google, right? From Google, we're talking about Google. Google, beautiful move off the bottom. It's still one of the very few names still below supply, but look how close, right? Look how close Google is uh, to recapturing that 165 area. That's going to be the magic number for any close on Google. Uh, Amazon, right? Amazon, again, just like Microsoft, when it reclaimed back the 50-day moving average, look at the beautiful move, 180 and a half. Uh, all the way to 190s. Again, big, big, beautiful move. Uh, Apple, uh, with all its problems, with all its issues, and and and, and China possibly uh, lackluster sales and iPhones and this and that. The third, look at look at the move here. Yesterday it got rejected off the 50-day moving average. Today it was a humongous gap and goal. Again, when was the last time you saw Apple up eight points on a non-earnings day? So you have a lot of really strong strength. The, the couple of names are, are 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 still bothering me a little bit. Look at SMCI. SMCI did not rally today, right? Did not rally. So just in case, folks, and this is, you can make a really good case. This is a very strong bear flag because this is still underneath all supply. Just in case, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting into the symbols right now, uh, I have to go take my, I have to go bring my son to uh, basketball training. But, you know, look at this flag here, right? Just in case there is profit taking tomorrow and there is a little bit of downside, at least bias for, for the morning. Watch SMCI. This is definitely the cleanest channel to the downside uh, that I've seen uh, in the tech space. But if you look at all the other names, remember yesterday we talked about NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA at least today got back above the 50-day moving average. Now, I'd like to see NVIDIA uh, start building above this level and start attacking uh, the highs from 912. Uh, we did see pretty aggressive uh, call buying coming in on NVIDIA today. Uh, the weekly 19s, the weekly 20s, we saw some next week's uh, 124s come in. So very, very, uh, you know, very, very important next couple of days that NVIDIA does not lose back the 50 day moving average. Uh, look, for example, Netflix. Uh, this is now the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, took out 52 week highs today. Not a huge move, but took out a 52 week highs. But the name that finally, finally, right? It only took 96 times. It only took 96 times to work was finally Tesla, right? We, we were talking about this. For, for a week. And I'm like, how many more trades, how many more trades can you put on that goes up 50 cents a dollar and goes down seven? If, if you look at Tesla's history for the last week, okay, you saw every single day, literally every single day, 
it took out the previous day's high, which is usually a bullish. And then somebody was such a big, massive seller in the stock, they kept on dumping this thing six, seven points. Today was finally different, right? Who would have known that 98th time is finally the charm. So Tesla, this is the highest close in this whole formation, guys. It finally got above the 535 level. It finally stayed there. It closed uh, right at the highs, we saw massive, massive call buying coming in for tomorrow's uh, 245, uh, 250s uh, coming in, very, very aggressive. And you can see how close this is to start filling in this whole, you know, start filling in this whole gap here. So very, very bullish uh, tomorrow. If there is uh, any potential profit taking in the morning on Tesla, again, when you have these big moves uh, from. Uh, these cult-like names always use that as an opportunity uh, to buy the dip into the rising 60-minute support because there's always a high probability because, again, Tesla closed literally at the highs. Uh, if Tesla starts confirming today's channels tomorrow, man, this thing is going to give uh, another leg up. So any opportunity tomorrow, and again, hope you know, if there is, there is, if there is, there isn't, uh, but any opportunity tomorrow if Tesla gives you uh, a dip into rising 60-minute support and it goes red to green and starts building above today's channel, you could get... Uh, a second uh, move up. I, I also like Bank of America. I know it sounds crazy to say, but Bank of America today got back above the 50-day moving average, which is super bullish. And you can see here it stopped now three times into the same uh, supply. If it could get back above this Bollinger Band where it stopped today, you could start uh, giving a next leg up. Let me give you guys a couple of more names because I got to I gotta run, I got to run, I got to run, I got to run. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of other names that I like. Uh, look at v VKTX for biotech name. Uh, look, at, look, at this, look at this range here. Again, I don't know if it's going to confirm tomorrow, uh, but look at this range here. A big, big range here going all the way back to July uh, the 26th. So keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts getting above those July 26 highs. Uh, this thing can uh, really wake up as well. Like I said, I'd like to see NVIDIA just start building above uh, the 50-day for a couple of days, maybe go next week, but it's very, very possible it wakes up uh, tomorrow, as long as it stays above it, it should be fine. Uh, Avago uh, continues to act really well. You guys remember Avago again reclaimed the 50-day moving average uh, last week. It kept highlighting all these names above the 50-day. Again, nice, almost very, very close. Maybe it doesn't get there tomorrow, but it's still not that far away uh, from confirming the July range. But definitely, definitely, guys, keep your eyes on Tesla tomorrow. Again, any dips into rising 60-minute is super proactive, and especially if it does take out uh, today's channel, starts building above today's channel, we could have a day two run. I got to cut this a little bit short, guys. Everybody, God bless. Hope everybody's doing well. Hopefully, yesterday's shenanigans is now behind us, and now we are full steam ahead. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I'll catch you guys on the field tomorrow. Take care, everybody.